Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Break Blogging, where we're going to talk about your email list some more. We're on stage three of the overall cycle of building our online business that we're talking about with Coffee Break Blogging, and stage three is all about building and using our email list effectively. So what we're going to be talking about today are seven things that you can do with your autoresponder sequence. Now, uh, starting when we started stage three, this is going back to say around episode 70 or so, just off the top of my head. We talked a lot about how to get people onto your list. We talked about lead magnets, we talked about putting together opt in forms, things like that. In the last episode, we talked about the perfect opt in confirmation page. So that's going to be the first page that they see right after they opt in. Today, we're going to talk all about what do you send them after they've subscribed? Obviously, putting people on your email list is useless unless you send them things. I mean, that, that part should be pretty obvious. Now, the good thing is about an autoresponder is that you can put a lot of this on automatic. Obviously, you can email people, email your list um, on a one-off fashion. So, you know, you type something, you hit send, and it's, and it's real time. And there's definitely a place for that. You will be doing that with your list. However, you also want to be using your autoresponder, your follow-up sequence capability, so that you don't have to do everything manually. Because I've seen people make the mistake of building this list and then they're like, I don't know what to send them. And then they just don't send anything. And that's such a waste of an asset when you do that. So let's jump right into what to do with this autoresponder sequence. And we're going to talk about seven specific things to do. Number one is you can run an offer to your new subscribers. Now this, if you go and look at the blog monetization model, you'll see that this is actually part of the model itself. When somebody subscribes to one of your lead magnets, you're going to send them a offer that goes along with that lead magnet. And it's, so it's gonna be a very targeted front end offer. And it's, it's gonna be on the page that they see. It's gonna be on that confirmation page. The first page they see after they opt in is gonna be uh, that offer along with an acknowledgement that they're gonna get that lead magnet or what have you. We talked about all of that in episode 77. But along with seeing that page, you also you wanna put them onto an autoresponder that's gonna be sh fairly short, typically not much longer than about three or four days. And it basically is gonna promote that front end offer. So if they don't take the front end offer right away, that's fine because they're going to be on a three or four day auto, auto uh, responder sequence, if I could even talk. Um, so that basically they've got three or four days after opting into the lead magnet to then go and buy the thing. Okay. And so that's the initial set of emails that they're going to get. You run that offer, you promote that front end offer to your new subscribers. The second thing that you can do with your autoresponder sequence is a welcome sequence. Now, typically the welcome sequence is what's going to be also sent to them simultaneously along with the front end offer. So those first few days, they're going to be getting more email than usual. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've never had anybody freak out over that personally. So, but basically this welcome sequence is all about orienting them to you, what it is that you're all about and what to expect. This is where you're typically going to highlight some of your best stuff. You're going to let them know what to expect. You're going to ask them perhaps to whitelist your email address so that uh, their uh, your emails actually get through. Uh, maybe ask them to add your email to their primary inbox if they're using Gmail things like that. It's all about getting them set up. And again, this sequence also will probably last no more than three or four days. Uh, after that point, you can pretty much consider them to be oriented, indoctrinated, if you want to use that word, uh, to you and know what to expect. And they're either going to be a, a, you know, a good loyal subscriber or they're not. Okay. So number one, run an offer to your new subscribers. Number two is to send them a welcome sequence. Number three, you can build in survey questions. Now, this is a really powerful way to get ongoing intelligence about your audience. And, the, and their, their answers will not only allow you to come up with new product ideas, new blog post ideas, but it will also give you some insight into the wording that your audience is using. So what I'm a big fan of using surveys 
and using open-ended questions because I like people to not, instead of just clicking radio buttons and check boxes, I want them to actually type what comes to mind for them. And I want to see what words that they use. I want to see the language that they use because that language is stuff that I will build into my blog content, but also build into my sales messages and products themselves. So you can build in these survey questions. There's one that I've that I've talked about before called the seven word question. And it's and it's very simple. It's just what is your biggest challenge right now? And you can build that right into the email sequence. Just send them a one one email says, hey, I really want to find out what's going on, what, what I can help you with. So can you answer me this one question? What is your biggest challenge right now? Now, here's a little trick that you can do is instead of sending them to some survey form or something, which is quite anonymous, you can actually tell them to hit the reply button and reply to that email. And you're going to get that email. Don't ever send those things to a bounce address. That was a total stupid idea. You want these emails to come to you. You want it to be acknowledged by a human being. Okay. So do that because here's the thing when they reply you're also that's it's a sign of engagement with your email list so that's going to tell the big web email providers like gmail and uh, and outlook and these guys that they're actually engage with your email list. And what does that do? That makes it more likely that your emails are actually going to get through the filters and get into their inbox. Okay. So, but the other thing too, is that it's just more personable. People are used to sending emails to other people. So when they send you an email and you should acknowledge them back, it just sets up this personal, um, you know, communication between the two of you guys. And I think that's very important. It's so much better than just sending them to some form on the internet. Okay. So that's build in survey questions. You can build in multiples of these throughout your email sequence so that you just have this ongoing stream of feedback coming from people. Okay. The number four, the fourth thing that you can do with your autoresponder sequence and this one's obvious, is to simply highlight your best blog posts. We all have those blog posts that we think, damn, that was good. You know, so highlight that. Pimp it out to your list and really give value to them over time. Again, this is a great way to highlight some of your best stuff and not have to do it manually. You know, these are new subscribers. And the, and the thing is, if you've got a lot of subscriber or a lot of uh, blog posts sitting in your archives, you can surface those things and continue to use those assets. Now, here's a little marketing tip is that if you send them to blog posts that also have good solid calls to action inside of them, then every single time that you promote one of your best posts, it's also a potential money maker for you. Okay. So be strategic in the, in the blog post that you decide to highlight to your audience, but you can still highlight these things, send them out to your subscribers on an, on a follow-up automatic basis. And that puts your business a little bit more on autopilot. All right. Number five, run promotional sequences. Now this again should be fairly obvious. It's very similar to number one, where I talked about running an offer to your new subscribers. But in number one, I was talking primarily about people who just got onto your list. The thing is with number five, I'm saying you can run promotional sequences over and over again for different products and you can send those out to your list. So let's say one month or two months after they subscribe to your list, you run a promotional sequence. So what I mean by this is that you're going to have a series of emails that you're going to write in advance and they're going to tend to jive together pretty well to, you know, maybe tease a product and then you'll, you'll, you know, promote it to them, just like that you would probably, you've probably been the subject of email promotions many times from other people. You can build that into your follow-up sequence and, and run it on automatic. And you can have these little sales coming in all the time. Every subscriber on your list is going to be on their own unique schedule, but they're all going to see the same promotions at the right time for them. Okay. So run promotional sequences and these can be for your own products, but they can also be for affiliate products. If you don't have any of your own, you can definitely do this. Okay. Number six, you could promote different lead magnets to your list. So 
if you go back to episode 70 and 71, where we talked about lead magnets, I made very clear that you should not only have one. You shouldn't have just one thing that you give to your list. You should have a bunch of them because the purpose of these things is to promote certain types of people with different interests. And then based on that interest, you can then sell something to them related to that interest. So if a person comes into your list from lead magnet, you know, A, whatever that might be for you, it doesn't mean they might not also be a good fit for lead magnet D. So what you can do is just over time, you can promote, you can cross promote your other lead magnets to your existing subscribers. And if they opt in for one of those other lead magnets, and yes, they, they you should have them opt in again. Don't just say, well, they're on my list already. Let me just give it to them. No, you want them to take an action. You want them to take an action. So make them opt in again, okay? Because that action is their, it's their actual action of raising their hand. You want them to not just collect stuff from you. You want them to actually take some action. Now, once they've actually done that, then you know that they are interested in whatever that particular lead magnet is. So what can you do? You can follow up with a product promotion of some kind related to that lead magnet. So basically what this is, uh, it's kind of hard to show it here without the diagram, but if you look at the blog monetization model, it's kind of on there. But you're basically cycling your subscribers around. They come into your list on one pathway, and you send a certain set of emails to them over time. But then periodically, you can bring them back up to the top again and send them in a different shoot so to speak, into the same list. And based on what shoot they enter, what lead magnet they enter, you can send them a different promotion, okay? So this is a really powerful one. Promote different lead magnets to your list. And also while you do this, you're segmenting your list. You're, you're dividing your list up and you know what these people are interested in based on what they're opting in for. Okay, number seven and the last one for this episode is to do an evergreen launch. Now, this is very similar to running a promo sequence that we talked about in number five. But an evergreen launch is set up a little bit differently because essentially you're launching a product. You're maybe opening up the cart for something or opening up a course for sign up but with the idea that it's going to be closing back down again. And you can run these evergreen launches, the same kinds of things that you would see with a typical product launch, but you can put it on automatic and you can run this to your list. Now, you can do this with with many different ways. You can just, you can do the whole, hey, the cart is open, this course is available for sign up, and then then you run a, uh, let's say, a promo for five to seven days, then you say, okay, I'm closing it down now. Um, Another way that you can do it is to have a lead up into a webinar, and you can have this on automatic. In fact, you can even automate the webinar, although we're not going to talk about that right now. Um, but there's various ways that you can do this. So, and it works best for your own products, but it can definitely be done on affiliate products. Okay. So that's the idea of doing an evergreen launch. This is a, a, a launch sequence, a launch process that will run on an automated basis. Very, very powerful stuff. Okay. So let's quickly review. Number one is to run an offer to your new subscribers. Number two is to send them a welcome sequence to orient them as to what you're all about and send them really some of your really top stuff. Number three is to build survey questions into your sequence so that you can actually get ongoing intelligence from your subscribers. Number four is to highlight your best blog post. So this is beyond the welcome sequence. This is just an ongoing thing. So going out into time, you can go back into your archives and promote some of your best stuff. Number five is to run promotional sequences. And this can be for any of your own products. It can be for affiliate products. It really doesn't matter. Number six is to promote different different lead magnets to your existing subscribers. So this allows you to segment them into different interests and also send them more targeted promotions. And then number seven is to do an evergreen launch. Okay. Now, if you want to dive deeper into this uh, and get more instruction on how to set these things up, 
there is a one hour training lesson inside my course called List Building Simplified. Now this List Building Simplified course is basically a course on how to set up all the mechanics of your email list and what to do with that email list. So I go base, I go down to basics. This is like a one-on-one level course. If you're already a little bit more advanced with email marketing, this course isn't for you. But if you're kind of new at this, you're still trying to figure out how the different pieces connect to each other and what to do with the list, List Building Simplified was definitely created for you. Now, this course is only available to members of the Blog Monetization Lab. Right now, that's the only way that you can get this course. The good news there, good news there is that you can actually now get started on that course right now for only $29.60 because that is the cost of getting into the Blog Monetization Lab, okay? So if you want to learn more about that, go over to blogmonetizationlab.com and you will learn all about all the benefits of being a member of the Blog Monetization Lab. Okay, with that, I hope you found this episode useful. If you did, I would highly appreciate it if you'd run over into iTunes. That's at Blog Market. Marketingacademy.com slash iTunes and post an honest review of the podcast. It really helps me out. I do check that thing at least every week to, to look for new reviews and I'd really appreciate your review and your star rating, hopefully a five-star rating if you think that I deserve it. Okay, so again, thanks so much. I will see you in a few days with the next episode where we'll be talking a little bit more about writing awesome follow-up emails. I'll see you then.